Designing the Black Dragon. How I went from this to this. The inspiration and everything that went into designing and modeling this beast, including the great people of the Facebook Triton group and their epic Tritons. The design process pretty much started from the very beginning when I first bought my Triton. Gathered up a bunch of different ideas on what we would do with the Triton. Some things were pretty crazy and out there like these armoured cars, making an entire armoured car out of it. These are literally the first images of the ideas that we wanted to do to the Triton. We were also pretty set on creating a roll cage for it so it can go off-roading pretty much anywhere. Our goal was also to make it as flexible as possible, like in this image, but I don't think I realised in that time I don't think this thing has a CV at the front. Ideas for the lights, early ideas for the bull bar are pretty extreme, and some ideas on what the rims might look like, and even what we would put on the tyre to make it better off-road. We definitely want to put some cool RGB lighting in the interior. We also wanted uh, bucket seats or racing seats instead of the normal seats. And a possible roof console. These are some of the earliest ideas that I gathered on what the outside theme might look like. And then as I continued to learn, I was trying to look for ideas and I came across this video and I had no understanding in what I was actually looking at. I simply looked at it and I was like, wow, that looks really tough pretty much had the roll cage, it had the big tires and the suspensions and pretty much things that we were looking at doing. I wanted to see all of our ideas as a 3D model so I could rotate and see every single angle of it and really have a good idea on how it would look. So I could truly experiment with it and create my own custom designs using the 3D modeling applications. Instead of blindly buying the item and realizing it does not look good or there's a better option out there, it's also a matter of getting well informed before making stupid choices. So I decided to buy this Triton model because I wasn't really up to modeling an entire vehicle and I've never actually modeled a vehicle before. But I did have to make amends to it since the tub was an ML tub and not an MN model tub. This is literally my first drawing of a Triton and I drew it while sitting in my Triton. And I used no references. Yes, it looks like shit. And these are the two other closest things that come to a vehicle that I've 3D modeled. And so I 3D modeled all of the ideas that we had. It looks pretty terrible now. <laughs> I even took a picture of the front of my house and kind of plastered my car there to make it, to just get an idea of what it would look like if I actually had that car. <laughs> it was a bit, it was quite silly when I look back at it now. And then a while later, big gap in time, watching videos about four wheel drives and things like that. I come across this really, really cool looking Triton. It's pretty much fully customized. It's got the interior as well done in like Raptor coat and the bull bar was one of my favorite things on this. It looks so unique. And this is where I really actually wanted to pursue a custom bull bar, but yeah, later on learned that that's not really possible. And I learned about these remote reservoir suspensions. Also had an idea of putting that on my car. I came across these headlights, which I also incorporated in the design. And also the Mars uh, Angel Halo headlights. Then I slowly came across other things like awesome see-through uh, top air boxes with these awesome stainless steel snorkels. And I did believe that that would majorly do something to the power, but nah, now I know it doesn't and the rear bars and the rhino hide armor it seemed to be a really good idea but sadly they don't make it for tritons and the exhausts and as i learned more about full drives and legalities and what is practical off-road my ideas would slowly change from the initial ideas that we had so with all of my new learning i decided to update the model 
taking the original model's stock tyres and completely changing them to this kind of shitty tyre and then into the new and improved tyre. I also modelled this alloy rim from Luke Crane's Triton. It went from having no ball bar to many different ball bars that I modelled, all from scratch. And all of the different headlights that are modelled all from scratch as well, using the base template of the original model. I even had to make some amends to the original model because it was an ML tub and I had to create an MN tub from an ML tub, which wasn't that difficult. The hole underneath went from being completely bare. I added all of these extra components so it would look a little bit better. As I learned more and more about Tritons, this model slowly evolved. Even the interior, I decided to try to fix up at least just a little bit so it would resemble a little more of an actual Triton interior, including flipping the steering wheel on the other side. Here's my glorious mess of a quote-unquote garage in 3D. As I modeled my Triton, I looked at different references for the underbody, the chassis, and a bunch of different components to make sure that the Triton was as accurate as I could get it. Even if it is not to measurement, I still try to get it as best as I can. Pretty much every component that you see that I've modeled is a component that I somewhat understand or was bothered to 3D model. It's really just best to understand what you're 3D modeling, that way you'll get it more accurate. And as you're 3D modeling, you start to understand why things are shaped the way they are and how they work to a certain extent. That's why you'll see some of the things don't line up because I don't yet understand how they work and exactly where they sit. I haven't looked into that enough. And this whole model can be taken apart piece by piece. And of course, all of the issues that I ever experienced with my Trident aided in me really understanding and learning more about the car itself. And for the design aspects, you see that having a 3D model like this in front of you really helps and seeing what looks best on the Triton. For example, my very lengthy adventure with uh, Angel Halo headlights versus that uh, turbine headlight design. Oh god, I went through so much. This program is called Keyshot and you select the different materials on the original model which is just a, a, like a grey paint colour and you get to customise every single part of the model. You can also choose any environment that you want it to be in. You can actually create your own backgrounds using 3D. I sometimes make the floor 3D, so it just looks better. I was really trying to figure out which headlights look better. I also tried to look for a good bull bar and went through so many different designs to see which one sits the best on the Triton. I looked as hard as I could on all kinds of different triple loop bars. I tried to collect as many front views of all the bull bars and as many side views of all the bull bars that I was comparing. I just didn't like how many of these kind of just sat straight across the front bumper. So then I found this one and it sits pretty high on the sides and it looks very sturdy. While the other ones that sit high on the sides kind of look a little bit cheaper than that, like the United for its one. I kind of ignored all the legality stuff and I just wanted to make some custom bull bar that would have an interesting shape. So I took that Predator one from before and the Russian one and kind of meshed them together to try and make a bull bar. <laughs> And I kind of just gave up on that and I created the United Forex for one. As I learned about all bars, I learned that clearance is also very important. So I did want as much clearance as possible. And as you can see here, going through the battle of what looks better. X-Rox or United Forex 4. <laughs> Oh, uh, well my custom design is pretty ridiculous. None of these to me look good besides the the Xbox one honestly looks better here. But later on I find something better. And then I decided to fully render it out in this awesome background that I actually made for Luke Crane's Triton. I did more experimentation with the different headlights and different colours and then I thought what if the 
Halo headlights were RGB, and then I thought that would be the best option because I didn't really like these uh, turbine ones that much. It made it look a little bit goofy in a way. I don't, I don't know how to explain. Maybe some of you might see it. These are the only two MN slash ML Tritons that I've seen with the MR Triton bull bar. And this is a perfect example. See how much better it looks and how much more clearance you gain on the sides there. And the closest to that that you'll get in terms of clearance would be the Aussie 4X4 bar that you can see here as well. And even the, the Russian one that I thought that was like really, really good, it doesn't look like that it has that much clearance on the sides because there's a, an extra bit of metal. I did originally see this bar, but it never looked good. Probably because of the, the picture that I found it didn't look too good, so I completely ignored it until I saw it in the Triton group and realized that it actually looks pretty good. Again, these images are thanks to the people of the Triton group on Facebook. And I incorporate into the design and model it in from scratch as well. This is also about the time that I created the AI design video. Um, where I took a bunch of awesome designs that AI mishmash. I'm really hoping to be able to make either custom flares or custom body cladding or custom custom rhino hide armor type shielding that you can pop onto the car that has this awesome design, a custom unique design. And I'm yet experimenting still on that and I haven't included a lot of this uh, body designs on the actual 3D model yet. With all of these Tritons, I really try to ask myself, what makes it look so good? What is it? What's part of the design is it? Is it something to do with the tires? Is it the waxing? The polishing? Is it the bull bar? The body cladding? The lift? The color? The perspective? The camera composition? What is it? that makes these look really good. In fact, what is it that makes any of these vehicles look good? What part of the design makes it look good? And oh my God, I just came across this. And it gets so close to some of the ideas that I have. And here is where I really try to study the design and I can see that in this model, they kind of they made the Triton look sad for some reason. I kind of try to show here what makes it look better if it's at a, like this triangular shape here on the sides or if it's like this one, you know, it, it makes all the difference in the world for the design. Obviously this looks really cool. That front portion really does work well, but then the flares don't really match, but then the flares match with door cladding. Um, then at the top there, the door cladding doesn't really match with the bottom part of the door cladding. So there's a lot of things here and there that are mm, with the design, but it still looks really cool. <laughs> and this video is just going to end up endless and I can't bloody finish it because I keep finding new things to put into this video. <laughs> But those side racks and the top racks look like absolute silly overkill. It does actually take quite a bit of studying, in fact, because I'm an artist, I have a background in designing, so I have somewhat of an idea. But the Trident is pretty much the first vehicle that I'm ever actually 3D modeling or designing at all. After much research, I came to the conclusion that SAS, or Solid Axle Suspension Tritons, are the ultimate beasts for off-road. Just look at these extra flexy, sassy, SAS Tritons. Look at the way the suspensions articulate. But then people are going to be like, Ooh, we need to get a patrol. I don't want to fucking build my rig, mate. Why not the best of all worlds? So I decided to also incorporate that into my design as well. Hmm, <laughs> yes, but IFS can be good too. Look at this fucking Triton, send it! Again, big thanks to the Facebook Triton group for uh, letting me use these epic Tritons in my video.
This one's IFS, but it shows that they can have really good flex at the back if uh, modified correctly. I have learned that the cute little IFS, um, what I call flappy arms, can never really amount to what uh, solid axle suspensions are capable of. But as you can see, it being solid axle doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna have that flex. You need to put the necessary mods to be able to have such flex. But it's not only flex, it's also the strength of the solid axle that makes for it being great off-road. For example, the IFS will break its CVs 24-7 with large tires and a front locker and solid axle, well, it will be fine. That's of course not to say that solid axle also breaks their CVs, but it's a lot harder. At least as far as I have heard and seen. Although I have learned that there is actually less clearance at the diff on a solid axle than there is on an IFS. I did a short amount of research just to see whether or not an, a good IFS setup existed. And I did see that there are racing setups that are really good for IFS or people just take out the front CVs, which kind of negates the whole full drive. So obviously I wouldn't want to do that. But these IFS racing setups are apparently hard to get approved here in Australia. If it's possible at all. I mean, I still do want to stick with IFS. They have some amount of flex, but again, Solid Axle seems to always show as the, the ultimate. So I added in the Solid Axle as part of the design. And because I'm too lazy to do more research about how a Solid Axle is attached to a Triton at all, you get this result, which is a very simple, uh, scuffy version. I also updated the model, putting in a two inch body lift and a three inch suspension lift. Um, it's all approximate, none of it's to measurement because it's really difficult to do that. And I think you need like software like CAD or do some unit measurement thing on these programs, which I just, I don't know how to do. So I took a, the most perfect side view that I found quickly breezing through the tracking group once again. <laughs> to find this, which is apparently a two inch body, 35 inch tires and a three inch uh, suspension with the solid axle suspensions. I don't think you need a body lift, which I'm not 100% sure about that. And I know there's a lot of mistakes with the suspensions. I know I didn't include like um, pan art rods or whatever they're called in the arms for the solid axle suspensions, whatever those arms are called. I also learnt um, about tub chops a while before, but never really thought that they were really necessary or really functioned, but eventually saw how they could function. So I thought getting rid of that big Triton MN butt <laughs> would make it look a bit more sportish, I guess, or something like that. But So I'm still debating on a tub chop and I'm debating on what the rear custom rear bar should look like or if I'll put like a TJM bar on it. I'm really not sure. That's still something I'm kind of experimenting with. And actually, in fact, the whole car is just something I'm still experimenting with. Every time I learn something new, research something new, it changes. Jonathan Cray from one of the Triton groups seems to have done a lot of what I'm looking to do, except for the really extreme stuff. And then as of recent, I discovered the wonderful world of boost and turbo builds. Initially, I found this uh, F55 turbo builds on YouTube. I am absolutely addicted to that vroom vroom, that extra power. And I don't care if it's a full drive, man. I want it to run good. I've literally been melting my brains trying to research and figure out things about turbos, boosts, and engine mods. And still have it be reliable. And there are not many people that do turbo builds for Tritons, and it is difficult to find. So all of that is included in this design. Not only can you do that for power, but somebody put an entire LS1 engine in their Triton. This is a mic from Mr. Pajero. It does start off. I had left honors of seeing this thing in real life. God, that sounds like a beast. Yeah. 
And he's also one of those few people that have an MR uh, front bull bar. And look at this crazy hybrid of a patrol and a triton put together with a V8. Oh, and also I learnt about uh, diff gear ratios and I was pretty surprised that when you put big 35 inch tyres that you actually need to change the, uh, the diff gear ratios so it doesn't go too fast in first gear. In fact, I experienced this when I went full driving myself, that even with 33 inch tyres that it uh, feels too fast when I'm trying to crawl slowly and I'm riding the clutch. I'm still learning a lot about this stuff, so, you know, don't take my word for everything, you know, do your own research. And with the headlights, I settled with a Challenger headlight because I contacted a bunch of different people who worked on headlights and they need to work on something that, a headlight that already exists. They could work on the original Triton headlights, but I want a headlight that's RGB and has the dual halos. Just like the Mars ones, but just RGB. So I figured out actually you can take the Challenger headlights and fit them onto a Trident as you saw in the previous images, but that's absolutely possible. So I also took a look at these ones. I thought that they were nothing special, but they kind of do look better than the turbine. So I decided to mess around with these ones. And I kind of give you an example here of how much work actually goes into this and, th and this is actually one of the easier ones to do that actually didn't take me that much time but I didn't go into all the detail in the headlight but as you can see there's, there's a shit ton of experimentation and this has been sped up by 1000 times pretty much I keep um, trying to position the lighting as best as I can I keep trying to make sure that it behaves the same way as the reference image that you see here I can literally just spend hours and doing something like this, just experimenting, trying to get it right. It's it's pretty finicky. I guess it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty cool. I have also learned that depending on the angle that you look at some of these headlights at, some of them look better and some of them look worse. For example, this one looks good at a side view. It really does bring out that demon eye look. While from the front, it doesn't look as interesting. Or maybe it's just me. And I have concluded I'm probably going to try to avoid lifting the vehicle too much. Instead, I'm going to try to do something as this video shows with this custom Hilux where it's technically still two inch, but he actually modifies the body. So it still has a lot of flex and isn't ridiculously high. And from what I currently understand, the only real reason you would put a two inch body lift in is to accommodate larger tires and that flex. Other than that, you're just getting more body roll and higher center of gravity. So I don't see how that's good. And the lowest point of your car is the diff. And the only way you're getting those diffs higher off the ground is if you have larger tires or portal axles. One day I was randomly going through my renders and I came across this experimental headlight that I did and I actually realized it looks pretty cool. I am now fixed on the idea to get something like this. Oh, that would be fucking amazing. The closest headlights in real life that I've seen that get to this are the Mazda 6 headlights. And I have yet to see whether or not something can be uh, Frankensteined to fit the Triton. I tried to shove a X Rocks bar in this just to see how it would look and it most definitely does not look as good as the Aussie 4X4 bar being on it. And here I'm trying to fix up the headlights a little bit so they look a little bit more realistic because I literally just simply slapped it together with a couple of very simple shapes. So I wanted the light to behave more like the other lights that I was talking about earlier. That way it will make it look a little bit better, hopefully. And once again, the meticulous process that goes into modeling such simple shapes. And I was very lazy and you shouldn't necessarily use this program for these simple primitives. Instead, I should have used mine. You see that sometimes with random experimentation you get some pretty cool results. It's something I do in a lot of my designs. I just randomly slap something together and see if it looks good. 
And things like this happen. This view, for some reason, the way the lighting hits it looks absolutely fabulous. So, you know, right now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it looks really cool. But who knows what I'm going to think in the future. Just like I look back to that sh first shitty render of that first vehicle, the, the Triton model that I did. <laughs> Honestly, I might end up thinking that this looks like absolute shit. I mean, that is a good thing. It means that I've uh, improved. So now I'm in the part of the video where I show you the all the renders that it took me to get to the result it is at now. For both the Luke Crane Striden and my own. Every single render from the start to what it is now. It took a long time, a lot of research, a lot of dedication. But yeah, sadly you can't really get a custom bull bars and all of the choices of the bull bars are pretty much went through everything. There's probably something out there that I haven't and if there isn't, please do let me know. Um, but that's for the triple loop bars, of course. I'm not talking about the just the bars or a single hoop or something like that. One exception was the x rocks because um, people actually do put the um, hoops as an extra thing and I would really love to be able to learn more about full drives and how they work and I wanna <laughs> you know I've bugged a, a mechanic asking him whether or not I can just sit there and learn everything you know while he works but yeah you're fucking dreaming mate although I did get one mechanic to let me sit there and watch while he looked over the truck points scored yay I think I've spent more than a hundred hours just working on this model. The whole reason why I'm doing this is so that I can get the best view, the best 3D view that I can possibly get of my mind's idea of how I want my vehicle to look. Of course, with all the practicality in mind. Yeah, the legalities, yeah, all of this stuff. Hopefully I'll be able to get everything engineered and it'll be all roadworthy and everything. I am dedicated to making my Triton as best as I can get it in terms of design and off-road ability. And it will take me everywhere I want to go, plan to go, and even that which I do not plan. I am incredibly passionate about getting out there, seeing the world, seeing Australia, and being able to get anywhere that I want to go without being hindered or stopped because my vehicle isn't prepped or good enough. No obstacle will stand in the way of this beast. This is the Black Dragon. Here are all of the renders that I did for Luke Crane's Triton model. I was also still learning about um, using this program, and still am learning about using this program, and I randomly discovered the glorious like fog or clouds effect. You can see the progression of how I slowly got better and better, and when I discovered that smoke effect. So it really does take a lot of experimentation with the lighting, the materials to get everything to look right, to get everything to behave right, and you know, just trying to get the right angles so you have the best look, you know. You can see through these different renders how some of them look shittier and some of them look better. And that, that's what I was going through. And yes, the tires look a bit iffy. The tires were a very difficult thing for me to um, model, especially in Maya. So they do look a bit janky. And obviously a bunch of the other components like the suspensions and everything else underneath, uh, they're all kind of, you know, janky. And yeah, I did my best to replicate it. Yes, some things might be off, but yeah. <laughs>